This is properties of matter challenge your understanding question number one. This is one of the best questions which I have ever seen in thermal expansion. And it is much very expected for very much expected for J advance and Olympia. So let us see what is the question and how do we do the analysis of this question. So question is with the help of some arrangement, different portions of uniform metal rod of length one meter. So this is the rod I have drawn here. It is on horizontal tabletop are maintained at different temperatures. So you can see that this part of the rod, which is 0.2 meter is maintained at five degree higher than the room temperature. And this is maintained at five degree lower than the room temperature. And this is again maintained at five degree higher at the room temperature. The tabletop is not fixed unless very important key point. And after steady state is established, then total extension of the rod is found to be delta L. You have to find displacements of both the ends of the rod. So we need to find out that this end and this end, how much they will move. So let us see what is the concept in this. The first thing is that this is the rod here. Uh, this is 0.2 meter. You can see this is 0.2 and this is maintained at high temperature. This is maintained at lower temperature. And this is also maintained at high temperature, right? So you can see from the colors, this is 0 0.2, 0 0.4 and 0 0.4. This will expand because it is uh, maintained at higher temperature than room temperature. And this will contact because it is at lower temperature and this will also expand. Now, a few important points we have to see. So the point is that net friction force, once steady state is achieved, the net friction force, or just before that should be zero. Why? Because if net friction force is not zero, then center of mass will keep accelerating, which is not happening. Rod is initially also in equilibrium. Finally, also it is in equilibrium. So we are going to use that point. And another thing is part of the rod will move. So if parts of the rod, uh, parts of the rod are moving, then the first thing which, which comes to our mind while analyzing is that between these two points, if you see this is one point and this one point, whatever amount this will expand, since length is also same uh, and alpha is also same, by whatever amount this will expand, sorry, contract, the same amount this will also expand. So if you think that these two points remain fixed, then what happens, right? So I've written here, rod cannot have two fixed point. Friction force of the rod will not be balanced. I'm going to explain this point now. What happens if suppose this point and this point is fixed because the amount, the distance between these two points is anyway fixed because the, by, uh, the amount by which this will contract, the same amount by which this has to expand. But what goes wrong in that case, let us see. So you have to listen very carefully now at this point. Here, when it is, let us assume that this and this points are fixed. So if this is fixed, then what will happen to this? This, will, this rod will contract, this will go in this direction. So if this goes in this direction, then friction will act in this direction. Let us say that this is F1. And this is high temperature, so this joint will shift here. So when this joint shifts here, then what's going to happen? Friction on this will act in this direction, right? And then here, since this is a fixed point, this is at higher temperature, this has to move in this direction. So if this is moving in this direction, then friction also is going to act in this direction. Right? So net friction force, you cannot balance. This is not possible, right? Okay, so likewise, you can also explore the possibilities of two fixed points. Any two fixed point you can take, and then you can contradict by the similar reasoning which I have given. So let us now move to, let us suppose, if there are three fixed points in the rod, then what's going to happen? Okay, so this point I have assumed that this is fixed point. So suppose X distance, this is another fixed point. There is another fixed point. There are three fixed points on the rod. Then what's going to happen? This is, let us say, at x distance. Then the length of the rod is 0 0.2. This will be 0 0.2 minus x. So right now I'm ex um, ignoring the expansion as at this stage. And then here, see here now, if this is fixed and this is fixed, then the total, these two point, total distance between these two points is not going to change. That will happen only when this length and this length, the length which is expanding should be equal to the length which is compressing or contracting, right? That only it can happen. Then only this joint will shift. fine? So that is how this is 0 0.2 minus x, this is 0 0.2 minus x, right? I hope you understand. Now this rod has total 0 0.4 length, middle one, middle part, not, it is only one rod, it's not a different rod. So 0 0.2 plus x here, fine? Now, again, if this is a fixed point, then this length and this length should be equal. The amount by which this is contracting by the same amount, this will expand. That is how the distance between these two points remains fixed. 
So 0 0.2 plus x, 0 0.2 plus x. Now this part has how much length? 0 0.4. So this remains 0 0.2 minus x. Fine. So I hope you have understood this. Now after that, let us analyze the direction of friction. So this part, if you see, this is a fixed point. So this will expand. It is at higher temperature. So the, if this part, only focus on this part, where I am pointing. So if this expands, this has to go in this direction. Friction acts in the opposite direction. Fine. OK. This also, now this is the fixed point. This also expands. So when this part expands, this has to go in this direction. Friction acts in this direction. So this I have calling, uh, I have called as F1. This I am calling as F2. Now here, what happens? This is a fixed point, right? And but this point will contract. So when this part contract, it has to go in this direction towards right. Fine. Very carefully, you have to understand. So this is again friction is opposite to relative motion. Again, from here, this is a fixed point, right? Focus on this. And this part, this part is going to contract because this temperature is less. So temperature is less. What's going to happen then? It will move in this direction, contract. Friction is in opposite direction. What's going to happen here? This is a fixed point now. So what, what's going to happen? This is at higher temperature. This is going to go in this direction towards minus x. Friction is in plus x. What happens to this? This is at higher temperature. This is going to expand. So when it is going to expand, then this is going to move towards plus x. Friction is in minus x. Now I have taken somewhere f2, somewhere f3 that I'm going, going to explain. So friction here is proportional to x, right? See here mu m by l into x and g I have not written. So I, I will write g also, but that doesn't matter because uh, that is a constant will come out. So friction is proportional to x. So here f1, here I have written f2, here also I have written f2 because same length. Likewise, same reasoning here f3 and f3 because same length. Now this point 2 minus x also I have written as f2 because this is same as point 2. This length is same as point 2 minus x. So that is how I get three friction forces. But net friction force has to be zero. So if net friction force is zero, then f1 plus 2f3 minus 3f2 equal to zero. And friction is proportional to x. So let us see now what happens. We are almost done. So this is f1 is proportional to x. f2 is then 0.2 minus x. Uh, sorry, I have, I have written first, uh, yeah, f2, sorry. So this is 3 times 0.2 minus x. Then 2 times f3. f3 is uh, what? 0.2 plus x, you can see. So this is 0.2 plus x. I have not written g here. Let me write that also. So this is equal to 0. So since mu is not zero, lambda is not zero, g is not zero, this quantity has to zero, should be zero. So if this quantity is zero, that gives us x equal to one by 30. So we are now almost done. And what is given? The total expansion is given as delta L. Total expansion will be 0 0.2 alpha delta T, this part. And this will come contract and this will expand by the same amount. So this will cancel 0 0.4, 0 0.4. So this is given delta L. So from here now, 0 0.2 alpha delta T is equal to delta L. Alpha delta T I have found that is 5 delta L. Right, we have found x. Now, by what amount this end will shift? This is x, and coefficient of linear expansion is alpha. Temperature increase is delta theta, delta t, x alpha, delta t. Fine, okay. So, expansion of the right end is x alpha delta t. What's x? It's 130. Alpha delta t is 5 delta, so delta l by 6. This is for the left hand. For right hand, it is 0.2 minus x alpha delta t. So 0.2 minus x, you can now calculate. This comes out to be 5 delta L by 6. So this is one of the amazing questions which I've seen in the entire 11th and 12th curriculum. So if you have not understood this, or if you have any doubt, please write a comment and ask. I will try my best to clarify your doubts. So if you have liked this analysis, please give a like to this video. Please subscribe to this channel also. And if possible, please share this channel with your friends. All the best. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in next video. Thanks a lot.